So Doc ends up in Prescott and his roommate in this boarding house, one of the, we don't know how many people were in this. I don't think it was a big boarding house. There were no. just a few residents there. And one of them was a man named John J. Gosper. And he was the acting governor of the Arizona Territory because the governor had gone back to Washington, D.C. So John J. Gosper, Doc's roommate, he's acting governor and he is, he has challenges as acting governor because down on the border with Mexico, American cowboys are crossing over Mexico and stealing Mexican cattle, bringing them back through the canyons, back into the United States, rebranding them, and then selling them to the military bases there because the military has a contract to sell beef to the Indians. So there is this racket going on with the American cowboys going into Mexico, stealing the beef, bringing it back. The army may have known what was going on here even, but there's some racket going on. Oh, and by the way, if they ever happen to be any Mexican cowboys in the way, they were killing them. And Mexican government was well aware of this. And while Go Gosper was the governor, Mexico sent a heated series of communiques to Washington, D.C. and demanded that what they called these depredations be stopped, or they would, they would announce a war with the United States. So Governor Gosper contacted the um, Arizona Territorial Legislature, which met there in Prescott, and he asked for some Oh, I'm sorry. Washington wrote to Gosper and said, do something about the border situation. So Gosper goes to the Arizona Territorial Legislature, asks for some money to police the border, and the legislature says, the Arizona border with Mexico is not, is not Arizona's problem to solve. It's a federal border, and the United States government has to figure out what to do about the border with Mexico, which is fascinating because we're still trying to figure out what to do about the border with Mexico even now. And so Gosper, um, he's between a rock and a hard place. The federal government has ordered him to do something about the border. The, the legislature won't give him any money. So he, what does he do to fulfill this job? And in his private correspondence, he said, so I came up with my own plan. And it's kind of something sort of outside the law. He's proposing that he'll have his own private police force. And that's as far as we know about it. And he also is putting a bounty on any any cowboys found. So there's going to be a big bounty on finding people on the roads. But that's the situation when his roommate, Doc Holliday, Dr. Holliday, goes south to Tombstone where the Earps have arrived. And there's Wyatt Earp, who in his past has done some work as a chasing cattle, rustled cattle maybe. And so Doc walks into the middle of the things that are happening in Tombstone. And there seems to be a very direct link between the governor and Doc. Because after the OK Corral, we'll talk about that thing too, but after the OK Corral, um, there are some really high people put into place to represent Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp at the OK Corral, people who had distinct links to the governor in, in Arizona. So there's, they weren't on their own in what happened in Tombstone, at least in the defense of it. And we're going to see more interesting government government governmental links to come forward. So that was Prescott, and Prescott, I, I advise anybody to go there. It's beautiful. Pine uh, Pine oh, Scented it's, uh, Mountains. It's, one of the, my favorite places in Arizona. Yeah, it's Prescott. wonderful. It has a wonderful Western history. Love Prescott. Um, and he leaves, and interestingly, he goes down past Phoenix, which at the time was nothing because it was too hot to be anything. Takes a stagecoach all the way down to the train, takes the train a little farther, takes the stage. It's a long trip to get to Tombstone. And so he arrives there, and you want to tell us your short version of the whole Tombstone story? <laughs> Who are the key players and what's what Doc is walking into there? Well, the... Uh, I think I've been was really impressed uh, with uh, John Bozenecker's recent book on the cowboys. The cowboys. We're not talking about people who herded cattle. With the, the, you know the ordinary working cow hands that we that we think about, but a group that amounted to a gang that operated in southern New Mexico and uh, Arizona. Yeah, cattle rustlers. Cattle rustlers mm -hmm. and uh, train robbers and... Uh, Holiday said they were all part of the old Fort Griffin gang of cattle rustlers. So, more the, of the same. The, uh, at, at, but, uh, one of the things that uh, John does well in, uh, in, in his book is, is to... He, he, he maps out what happened to all of these guys, the number of people who were killed and, and, and 
the circumstances of the. Oh, are you talking about the vendetta ride? No, no, okay. no, no. The, just, just the, just you taking that wide group of people that uh, that we call the cowboys. Okay. Uh, and it's amazing how many of them came to a bad end as criminals. Well, they did bad things. So. And, and uh, but right. but people have apologized for the cowboys and said they oh they were just. Uh, exuberant, you know, taking advantage of the of, of opportunities on the border that weren't any big deal, and uh, uh, but initially the Earps don't get uh, uh, involved in that much. They they are. And what about what about Doc? My my opinion is that probably Doc uh, went to uh, uh, Tombstone. Uh, initially, not because of Wyatt Earp, but be more likely because of Bat Masterson, who was also down there at that time. Bat wasn't yeah. there for the the big drama, but Bat but was this, there. That was not the bad. The, they had had what was going on was a gamblers' war between the between the two groups. Uh, the one group of known, were known as the Slopers, and, they, and these were gamblers <coughs> from from the western slope of the Rockies, San Francisco area. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, but they had Luke Short was down there. There were a group of Dodge City gamblers uh, in uh, in Tombstone at the time, and I've always suspected that uh, Doc got wind of that and said, "Well, now I've been meaning to go. This is a good time to go." Right. And he goes down to help his quote. Friends, well, end quote. That, 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 and, and yeah, to make some money, <laughs> to make some money. There's and gambling money. going on. Yeah, those miners come in with all their their money they've collected, and they take it straight to the saloons. And so, uh, anyway, they uh, initially they uh, they have their first real encounter with the cowboys over the stealing of some uh, army mules. Okay, and again, we're talking about the Earps. This is not Doc. Earps, so Doc's, yeah. Doc's over here gambling. He's over the here Earps gambling. are having some problems. And the Earps are having problems with uh, when they got there initially, they did not have any positions except from Virgil. Virgil was had been appointed a, a Deputy United States Marshal while, while, when he left Prescott. And uh, but uh, in the and then they sent for Morgan, who was up in Montana, who comes down, and and he's not. Uh, but they do. There is a connection that develops between uh, Wyatt and Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. in which he works for a time as a, a, a basically as a stage driver. But uh, and he'd said when he first went down there, he wanted to convert his stagecoach or his his wagon that he'd driven down. He wanted to turn that into yeah, but, a transport. But he got down there and there was too much competition. Yeah, too much competition. So okay. he... Uh, and he'd been a, and he'd been a, a stage driver before when mm -hmm. he was young. So it's yeah. not unusual. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, the, uh, uh, there had been a, an incident involving... <coughs> stolen mules. Uh, military mules. Mm -hmm. And uh, as... Uh, Deputy U.S. Marshal Virgil goes out and uh, and he's in co in co connection with a, a military group too. They all ride down in there, and uh, there's a kind of a confrontational deal, but nothing, no real shooting that takes place. And where do they find these mules, though? On the McLowry Ranch. Interesting. Stolen mules on stolen the McLowry mule, Ranch. Stolen mules on the Frank and Tom McLowry's Ranch. Which is his first... Who are members of the cowboy right. faction. Okay. And uh, so it, it, it deteriorates from there. There, uh, there are different incidents. Uh, Wyatt will eventually be appointed uh, uh, deputy sheriff. For originally for Pima County because it, uh, Cochise split. County had not been created yet, mm -hmm. uh, so that we, so that the, uh, the county seat for Pima was uh, in Tucson. So they come on, they come back down to uh, back to Tombstone, and there are a series of episodes. There's not only there's also a substantial amount of literature of, of documents. 
uh, in, the, in the National Archives about other smuggling. Smuggling uh, that was coming out, out of Mexico as well as going into Mexico. Well, and, and you mentioned that Pima, Pima County had, they were just about to split off Cochise County, and so we have another interesting character who's going to complicate the story. John Bean. John Bean, who becomes the sheriff of Cochise uh, uh, County. Well, and uh, Wyatt uh, resigns his position as, uh, and there's a, there's a big deal involving a uh, court case over the election of, of Charlie Shibble. Right, as because they feel like the Cowboys have thrown the election. They were collecting yeah. ballots that didn't really happen, and he yeah. got more votes than were even out there to yeah. get. So again, Doc's not involved in any and of Doc's this. Not in, involved in is he running a Pharaoh game at the time? I believe yeah, in town. Much. Yeah, so he's he's doing his gambling <coughs> thing. He's, he's gambling. He's yeah. having his own run-ins though with some of the slopers. Doc the gets sloper, into with Milt Joyce. He gets into a fight. Fight. Right. Gets into a fight with Milt Joyce and shots are fired and H Holiday yeah. gets hit over the head with a gun and Wyatt says, you know, I thought yeah, thought that was going to do you in. Um, and they, he's quoted as having. But this is an incident uh, that that shows a a, a, a problem that Doc's encountering again. And that is that uh, Doc's most violent moments <coughs> also seem to have to do, it, uh, increasingly seem to have to do with uh, the fact that he is inebriated. I was going to say, he was famous for drinking a lot. And, and, uh, and so again, you, you combine the drinking and the gambling, and this is where you get those, and, uh, those and anger outbursts. And that's when they get in the, to the quarrel. And he'd had a, right. a, a, a fight with a, a man named Johnny Tyler. Yes, he had one of the slopers, <coughs> one of those California gamblers. Yeah. So there's already a, a break between that. Holiday alludes to that many years later in an interview that he did. He talked about how they, they, they thought they had the best of him, but they didn't. There are ghosts talking in this building now. But, uh, <laughs> Okay, so Doc, Doc is over here. Wyatt's got this going on, and we know the whole thing is going to come to a head, and we're all, we're all familiar with the tombstone stuff. But, you know, let me ask you the question that is most asked of me when I speak. Who fired the first shot <laughs> in the gunfight? I'm inclined to believe that Wyatt fired the first shot. Uh, he said he did. <coughs> He said that basically that he saw the Frank McLowry going for a gun, and he drew, and he was faster, and and uh, and Doc was at the at the at the street fight. Now we need to set up the street fight. Yeah, let's set up the street fight. And I want to talk about guns versus canes here too, because that's a really interesting point for the town. The, well, the fact that as they're walking down to the street fight, and we are l jumping over a lot of this because I think your, yeah. your listeners know a lot of this part of the story, yeah. and we want <laughs> this other. They're walking down to the street fight, and Holiday's got his cane, and Virgil's got a shotgun. Shotgun. And Virgil says to Holiday, give me, you know, trade me. I'll take, I'll take the cane. You take the shotgun. We don't want people to get nervy. Meaning if they see the marshal walking down there with a gun in his hand, people are going to know something's going on. And yet, what it's telling us is that Doc Holliday walking down the street with a shotgun in his hand wasn't going to make the people of Tombstone nervous, which meant they weren't nervous about Doc Holliday. He hadn't yet done anything that's other than having a fight in a bar. There's, well, he hasn't done anything in Tombstone yet that is going to make people be wary <coughs> of this killer, he Doc Holliday. He didn't have that reputation. He did. we got to remember one other thing, though, that, is, that plays into this. And that is that... Uh, in the previous spring, there had been uh, an attempt to rob the Benson stage, mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, in the aftermath of that, some people accused Doc of being one of the people who attempted to save. Because Robert. one of the robbers was Billy Leonard, who was a friend of Holiday's from right. Las Vegas right. and Otero both. So he was connected, and he may have been. He may have gone out to the ranch where Billy Leonard was staying. Oh, it's I'm, possible. I, I suspect he did. I suspect he did too, and I suspected he went out there and said, "Don't do this stupid thing, my friend." 
you know, and, and there's a thing in, in, in Kate's memoirs where she talks about Doc coming in after yes. all of this and said, I can't believe he did this. Right. I can't believe he did this. And, and everybody is, you know, they puzzled over that. But I think he's talking about Billy Leonard. I agree, absolutely. I think it was <coughs> Billy Leonard. And they had an interesting connection, the two of them, because Billy Leonard was a jeweler, and they had to melt down gold, uh, uh, which is how he ended up doing some other nefarious things. He had that, that ability. But that's also something that dentists had to be able to do, was to melt down things to make other products. So he and Billy Leonard even, you know, they had more to talk about than just who was playing what at the poker table. So I agree 100% with you. I think that Holiday, he was good friends with Leonard, and they and Leonard eventually died of, well, was dying of consumption. Um, and I think that he, he was aware of what his friend was considering doing and tried to warn him against it. Well, this is... And then he gets accused of maybe having been part of it. And of course, this incident, there's a, Doc is arrested. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, or, or is accused, He's and accused. then, and then uh, we have the incident with Kate, uh, uh, basically accusing him. Well, and let's let, let's fill in there for those that are more aware <coughs> of Wyatt's story than of Kate's story. Um, Kate was the in and out, storming in and out of Holiday's life person. She hated Wyatt. She said she was always trying to get Holiday away from Wyatt. Yeah. And when he refused to break with Wyatt, she said she decided to accuse Holiday of being part of that Benson stage robbery, to accuse Holiday of that, to get him away from Wyatt, which is a really interesting which way to a... break somebody apart. But it does sound like something an angry woman might do. So she, <laughs> she's mad at him and she accuses of this thing, him of this. Virgil has to take her into custody. She's cussing and swearing, and now she's threatening Virgil, so she's threatening the officers, and she's just getting herself into more and more trouble all the time. And Virgil put her in, uh, his prison for her was a, a hotel room, till she sobered up. And that, you know, the paper said something about, you know, such as the, such as the justice of a woman, you know, a, a drunken woman or drunken something. Woman. Yeah, and so a lot of things are now conspiring to make Holiday have more trouble. But the town still doesn't see him as a dangerous person, or Virgil wouldn't have given him a shotgun to carry down the street. Well, the uh, one uh, thing about that is that uh, <coughs> the Benson stage robbery will linger. Absolutely. And people will continue every time it would come up. The people like Milt Joyce, for example, who was a saloon keeper. Oh, here comes the stage robber, he'd say. Uh, here comes the stage robber. Here, right. they, they were making accusations against Doc. Well, and isn't this what ties into <coughs> the problem with Ike Clanton? Is that Ike Clanton was associates with some of these robbers, and and he supposedly, I mean, what what apparently happened was that Wyatt. <coughs> <coughs> tried to, to enter into a deal with Ike and maybe Frank McLowry to find those Benson stage robbers to, to help catch the Benson stage robbers and so how now do the rest of the Cowboys how are they going to feel about Ike Clanton going into a deal well, to catch some of their not compatriots they're going to like it one bit and, which is why <coughs> uh, why Doc me why Ike doesn't want that information to get out because he thinks it's just a secret between uh, two or three, I mean, uh, two or three people. Right. And he, and then, then he's going to blame Wyatt for telling about their deal. After all, three of the the, the Benson stage robbers uh, die prematurely. And he, and he, yeah. and he accuses Doc of the same thing of letting yeah. Because Ike is very skittish that people are going to know. Um, we skipped over something we need to talk about, Skeleton Canyon. We, Skeleton Canyon, we need to talk about the death of Ike's father. Okay, that was uh, an incident w in which... Uh, because it, it matters to this story very much. They, uh, <clears throat> the cowboys went into Mexico and took uh, some cattle and were driving them back north and they were encamped at Skeleton Canyon when they were attacked by Mexican the Federales. Federales. Mm -hmm. And uh, old man Clanton, uh, the father of Ike and Billy, 
and Finn um, is killed along with the, the last of the Benson stage robbers and the and the uh, <clears throat> and a couple of other people. And it needs to be said that old man Clanton, he's not just the old man. The movie Tombstone, you never meet him, but originally in the original <coughs> script, you would have met old man Clanton. He was going to be played by Michener. Uh, when right? they died, but yeah, but and, and and he was Mitchum. Mitchum, I'm sorry. <laughs> Michener's a writer. Um, old man Clanton was the head of that whole wrestling operation. And when he died, other people had to step in. And in the movie Tombstone, um, they 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 had to rewrite the script because Misham got ill, I think. And so they took Old Man Clanton out of it. They put Curly Bill in as the head cowboy with Johnny Ringo as his partner. And Ike Clanton becomes just this comic character off to the side. But he's actually, in real life, he's the son of the man who's the operating, the, this whole operation. And it, it, supposedly it was the Federales who killed his father, but he blames it on the Earps. He thinks that Wyatt Earp and probably Doc had something to do with the death of his father. So we got to remember that going into the Tombstone Troubles, this isn't just something in Ike's far distance past. He thinks these men have helped to murder his father. So he has huge anger toward them and also fear that his connection with Wyatt on this business deal is all going to come out. So Ike is a time bomb about to go off. Yeah, and he, uh, and he does really in the... Uh, <coughs> They, uh, Ike comes to Tombstone in October and he confronts Wyatt and, and said about letting the secret about out the, about letting the information about the deal get out mm -hmm. so uh, uh, at this point Doc was in uh, Tucson at uh, the festival at a festival. He'd gone with Kate to a festival. Big <coughs> festival, the cathedral there, there's a Catholic cathedral, and it had um, a big festival, a religious festival every year, and it had also become a town-wide party. And there was, um, uh, uh, Levin was a Jewish brewer who had, he, he found a way to make some money off the festival, so he had developed these party grounds, uh, a plaza, a fairground, and they had a brewery on it, and then they had shooting and bowling and um, roller skating and all kinds of entertainments and lots of gambling. So it was a big old party there and so Kate and Doc had gone to Tucson to the festival and a very interesting aside, Levin's, Levin's um, son-in-law um, Levin's son-in-law um, married again and they became the grandparents of Linda Ronstadt, the oh. singer. <laughs> so Direct connection to Doc Holliday and Kate through Levin's Pleasure Park. So Doc's up there and he doesn't know anything's about to happen down yeah. in Tombstone. I always like to look at it from his point of view. What's going on with him? He's just dealing with Kate and he's gambling, having a good time at the fair. Somebody comes to see him. And something Morgan comes up from Tombstone and says, we need you back in Tombstone. And of course this is not going to sit well with Kate. Because uh, they're going to leave her there. He's going to leave her at the hotel. They're going to leave and go back. She goes back with him, but she's... Uh, yeah, they, they say he gives her a whole <coughs> list of things. Well, we've got to go this way. Well, I can go that way with you. Well, then we're going to ride this vehicle. Because it's several vehicles you have to take to get back to tombs, Tombstone. And, uh, and then we're going to take then we're gonna take an open buckboard. Well, I can ride a buckboard as well as you can. And he, she, she said he finally realized he couldn't get rid of her. So yeah. that's how Kate ends up in Tombstone. For but the uh, so they get back, and Wyatt uh, tells him that Ike Clanton is uh, drunk, drunk, <laughs> and making all these remarks. Now, <clears throat> I, I see uh, Virgil making a mistake mm -hmm. on the night of the twenty-fifth when this thing kind of when they when they had this little confrontation, and the, and Ike is an <coughs> in a bad mood and it looks like there's going to be a fight and they, and Doc and Ike are yelling at each other. In, in, a, in a lunch counter in a restaurant yeah. having lunch at midnight. And uh, so, but what Virgil, and you know should have is a, an expression that doesn't mean very much because <laughs> you can't should have done anything but to, uh, anyway, he uh, <clears throat> the smart thing for him to have done, I believe, would have been to arrest both Ike Clanton 
and Doc. For causing a ruckus in the saloon. For causing sure, a, a ruckus. ruckus and, and put them and let them both sleep it off. Mm -hmm. But instead, he caught up to him out in the street and, and basically uh, convinced him to leave. And Doc goes home to, to, to sleep. sleep. And, and, and home being a boarding house room at Fly's photograph, photo, photo gallery. Yeah. Which happens to be next door to this, Where the, this horse corral. To the uh, vacant lot that right. they basically that was used by the corral occasionally. Right. <clears throat> so, um, the next day is always one of the most interesting things because Doc I mean, or, or Ike apparently never goes to bed. He continues to drink and, and make threats around and town. make threats around town. So mm -hmm. the next morning, <coughs> the other policemen that work with Virgil, they make two different times came to his house and said, "You got to do something." Ike Clanton still raising his hand, and it takes a the second one for Virgil to finally get up and said, oh God, i got to go see Well, and is it before this time, before Virgil gets up, that Ike has made an appearance at Doc's boarding house room, yeah. and Kate answers the door, and she tells him that Ike, Ike Clinton had come there with a gun looking for him. Excuse me, folks. I'm, I'm beginning to sound like Doc. Do you need a whiskey? We're, we're here yeah, behind yeah, a big yeah. bar. You haven't got a... <laughs> A shot of whiskey here, have you? <laughs> oh. So Ike Clanton has come over looking for Doc with a gun in his hand. That's all they know at this point, and that's what Kate's told and, him. Uh, and, and Doc says, "I'll, uh, I'll if, if God lets me live that long, he'll, I'll get up and see him because he's had a rough night. And yeah. mornings are not good for Doc. He has a cough, you know, it's tough. So this whole, uh, this whole deal is, uh, begins now to take a, a bad turn because... Uh, Virgil gets together with Morgan and Wyatt, and they divide up to go look for Ike. And at one point, <coughs> Wyatt sees Ike in the street, and beyond Ike is Virgil. And uh, Ike basically is uh, armed with a rifle as well as a, a pistol, and uh, they uh, accost him and uh, buffalo him, hit him over the head with a pistol, and dragged him into court. Which certainly is going to calm him down and make him happier. Uh, so he's in, but he's in. He's when he gets into the court, they have to wait on the judge. And he's screaming threats to them about uh, what he was going to do when he got through. And, uh, and he's, he, at one point, he made a statement that, to the effect that uh, if uh, it had been a minute later, it would have been one less herp uh, yeah, around. Yeah, you had a murder on your hands. Here. So yes. this infuriates Wyatt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Wyatt leaves the courtroom in a rage and he runs right smack that cadab into uh, Tom McLowry. Now poor old Tom, I, uh, he's a... Uh, he doesn't know what's going on here. He's, he has, doesn't really have a, know what's going on. He, he, he's, he, he's there more than likely he's, he's finishing up some business to get ready to go to his sister's wedding back in Iowa. And uh, so he, go, he, he runs into Wyatt and he makes some remark to Wyatt about uh, this, and Wyatt's just infuriated and pulls a pistol and slugs him over Hits the head. Hits him too. <coughs> and leaves him on the ground. So now you got to look at if you look at it from the cowboy's point of view, father's dead to Ike Clanton. They're beating me up in town. He's probably going to badmouth me to my companions, and now you're beating up my partner too. Yeah. So there is rage rising, and here's Doc who doesn't know what's happening yet. Yep. In fact, he leaves his room, and he runs into Billy Clanton, and he says he wishes him a good day. Yeah. He shakes his hand yeah. and wishes him a good day. Yeah, he has no idea. And then, but when the... Here's but, Virgil and Wyatt making some bad choices. But Frank, Frank and... Uh, and Billy have just arrived in town. They, they, uh, Ike and uh, Tom came in the day before. 
Now, so we have this, uh, and when they get into a place, well, Tom actually goes to see a doctor. And after he has seen, seen the doctor, he goes back to where, where he has been staying. And he, uh, I think he, he, he would, the, the fight was pretty much gone out of him and he uh, may well have uh, turned in his pistol, the one that was later recovered. Uh, but Ike comes in and he's talking to all these people who are telling him basically what are rumors. He's not talked to Ike yet. He's not talked to, uh, to Tom yet. He doesn't really know what's going on. But he finds out that I, I mean that uh, that Tom has been buffaloed in the streets of Tombstone, and he is in a rage. Police brutality, as yeah. they would have he said. He is a, basically he's ready to go after the the uh, the Earps now, big time, and uh, it's it's uh, I <clears throat> I'm, I have a little trouble tracing Tom after this. I know he gets his, his, his head bandaged and he gets up, but I'm not sure that they meet up right away. Uh, most people think that they, that, they, that they met up then and that Tom was with them all the rest of the way, but I think he went up with, that he was taking care of business and he went into uh, like a butcher shop to take care of some business there and uh, maybe getting ready for his trip. And, uh, <coughs> but what's happening on the street now is that everybody's got a rumor. Downtown Tombstone has turned into a rumor mill and, it's, and everybody's standing back watching. They're all wondering what's going to happen next. And uh, they both have a, a, a story to tell. Uh, the, both sides have a story to tell. Uh, Ike and uh, uh, his group will basically tell the story that they were going to leave town and that they had a few things to take care of and that they went, they stopped at Spangenberg's gun shop to buy things that they needed. And But uh, Spangenberg wouldn't sell Ike Clanton a gun because of all the furor. All the talk in town yeah, surrounding all the talk running around arms. But see, yeah. Wyatt, Wyatt and Virgil haven't seen that actually, that transpire. <clears throat> so from a one person, stand, from the standpoint of the Clans and McLowry's and all, the, all their buddies who were giving them information that basically supports the, the, the Clantons and, and McLowry's. Um, so they're getting madder and madder, especially Frank. Frank had a great temper. And, uh, then, and then when they see the Cowboys at Spangenberg, uh, Wyatt goes down and, t and, and tries to Take their horse off. Takes the horse off the sidewalk. the sidewalk. He just had to do that. And, uh, and he and didn't have to do that, but he was already. <coughs> he wanted to. <coughs> he wanted to see what was actually going on there, and uh, and of course they have another little confrontation, which raises the temperature a little more. Mm -hmm. And uh, Virgil comes down. When he, when he realizes what's going on. And to make the thing more complicated, the Tombstone uh, Vigilance Society, they're uh, basically who were led by two men of fairly strong character and, uh, uh, and experience, are, are feeding Wyatt with the, with the other side of the story. They're here. The, they're cowboys, this, yeah. the cowboys are walking the streets talking about what they're going to do with you. Right. So now they're pushing these lawmen into doing something. They're, 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 and, they're, and, they're, and just think what it would have been. A, it would have been a disaster for Virgil 
because if the, if they had if they'd had to call out the vigilantes to to intervene, it would have appeared as if Virgil couldn't handle it. Exactly. It would, so, so, that, Virgil, now, so they're going to have to says, do I'm not going to do that. And they keep making these talk, and then they, but they have said that they were going to leave town. At uh, and it's conceivable that they were, but. Uh, the, the uh, up there in Halfords Corners, things are getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And Johnny Bean comes into the scene, and he <clears throat> he volunteers, and that he will talk to them and and uh, try to just mean to quiet down the situation. And he leaves <coughs> and said that they he said they're going to be a, I think we can get them out of town. So that's okay. So Virgil waits, and this thing goes on, and then more people come up and tell in the Earps what's going on, and they say, "Oh, they've not left town. They're down in the corral well, they're, right they're, now. They're down. Uh, they're down on on Fremont Street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now here's what's one of, one of the interesting things that's taking place. If you follow the route." that the Cowboys took. They went up over to Fremont Street and turned the corner. And Frank then goes into a, a butcher shop. Again, it may have to do with business and all mm -hmm. of this. And then that's where they meet Ike Clanton. When he, when he came, not Ike Clanton, the uh, Sheriff Bean, when they come out of the, 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 the uh, uh, the shop, and uh, it's, it could be at that point where they meet Tom. I don't, I'm not 100% sure of this. I've, that's, that's always bothered me. But if you, let's just assume for a minute that they walk with uh, with the McLowry brothers, that Ben walks with the McLowry brothers and maybe Ike Clanton <clears throat> back toward down the, the street toward uh, Fly's Gallery. Now it's uh, it's absolutely possible that Billy Clanton and Billy Clanton keeps saying he wants just wants like to go home. Well, the problem is that the place where the the shootout took takes place is at the near the end of that block. It's only a it's very narrow space. If you go down one or two more buildings, depending on which map you look at, you're at the street, and across the street is the corral where Ike Clanton has left his wagon. <clears throat> so you can make the argument that when they they had to pick up a horse at uh, at uh, uh, Dunbar's, mm -hmm. and they went and walked across the street. And went through the OK Corral all the way across the street, and they get to back there to a certain point toward the back of the OK Corral, and Ike and Frank head out to over to Fremont Street over here, and uh, the others, uh, Billy and uh, uh, Bill Claiborne, they go over and wait. Essentially, are waiting for the others at the. Uh, at the uh, uh, lot next to the to the flies gallery, so they they're divided during that period. And and Frank and uh, the, and, and uh, Ike are supposedly taking care of business, and Billy and Claiborne are just talking. We don't know about it. they're both young kids, and so. We step forward a little bit, and Ben comes up, and they walk down the street, and uh, <clears throat> he and he says, "Listen, just go with me to the jail, and let's just get this uh, resolved. This I'm not giving up my guns, you know." Frank says, "Still hot headed," <clears throat> and uh, it, it comes to a, it, and all of this is conversation is going on 
when they look up and lo and behold, somebody has, uh, has notified the Earps where they were and the Earps are come walking down the street. And so Bean leaves the cowboys and rushes out to the to the Earps and said, I've got to thank already you. Already disarmed I've them. I've already disarmed them. Everything's okay. And they just basically brush Bean aside. Well, and, and as you pointed out, Virgil, and, Virgil has to act now. If he does nothing, then he's kind of lost his reputation his in reputation, the town. Reputation, yeah. He's yeah, lost he's got his it. credibility. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> but interestingly enough, I, I, I always found this to be telling. Sheriff Bean doesn't go back with them to, to continue the conversation. He gets out of Instead there. Instead of that, he ducks into a building yeah. on the side, of the side of the street. So he's not, he leaves them to their to their uh, County fate. Sheriff, who should have had something to do with this. Yeah, he could have gone back and, and, and continued his yes, discussions he and with he, And he should have. And he, he should have. He should have been going, go, gone back down there with Virgil, yeah. talking to Virgil and trying to get him to... So now we look up and we've got the famous walk down Allen Street. And, and there they are, four abreast. And Doc Holliday with a rifle in his hand, which he didn't mm -hmm. have before it was given to him by Virgil. I said... They, what he was using was a uh, what was called a messenger gun. Right. The, uh, they were shotguns used by the Wells Fargo guards. They usually have about a anywhere from an 18 to a 24 a inch barrel. Yeah, it's shorter a shorter. Barrel. It's not a sawed off shotgun like a 14 or inch barrel or something like that. It's 18 to 24 somewhere in that range. Um, and it's what Wells Fargo messengers and Wells Fargo guards on the trains and so forth generally carry and that was the weapon that he was using it wasn't his personal it wasn't doc's personal gun right <coughs> now it, it's interesting in, in the movie you often hear and it, it's in the movie tombstone and a lot of movies follow the same script um wyatt telling doc you don't need to come down here with us and of course in tombstone he says that's a hell of a thing for you to say to me um it, like i'm coming down because i'm your defender wyatt mm -hmm. Well, this is Virgil in charge of this operation. It's not Wyatt. And Doc is intimately involved with what's going on. This isn't Wyatt's problem that's being handled. Ike's been to his house that morning, his room that morning, looking for him with a gun in his hand. This is also Doc Holliday's job. So he's not there to defend Wyatt Earp. He's there at the behest of Virgil, who probably shouldn't have quickly deputized him, you know, de facto deputized him at that moment anyway, because he was involved. But this was this was Doc's own problem he was handling for and himself. And this, and given his given his upbringing and his background, uh, he had a stake in it. There's no doubt. Well, it, 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 yeah, absolutely, <coughs> it was his stake, and and his friends were in it. So you put yeah. those two things together. But he wasn't there for Wyatt's sake because Wyatt wasn't the <coughs> boss man of this or this situation here. <laughs> I didn't know they had phones. Yeah, they didn't. Have well, didn't no. Isn't there a story that Wyatt Earp actually made a phone call at one point? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a story. Yeah, it's disputed. Yeah. It's disputed about whether Wyatt made a, a, a phone call from well, from, he's from call, Tombstone. He's calling now from the spirit world to yeah. add his part here. Okay, so now you've now they're down there. I mean, we all know it's been so well depicted. Um, there's been, you know, Jeff Moore did great work on this, helping to find out exactly who did what. Then now we get back to that question: so who fired the first shot? Well, I'm I'm inclined, to, as I said earlier, to to believe that it was uh, that it was uh, Wyatt. Although most of the, I mean, a lot of people say it was Doc, and they talk about the sheriff being, for example, testified about the. First shot came from a nickel-plated revolver. But why would you pull a revolver when you had the other gun that's in your the, hand? That's the crazy. It requires a juggling act. Yes. Which is why I don't give it much credit. Right. You would, what you I, would fire what the I first think one was, and toss it aside. Here's the way I think Doc played it. Mm -hmm. I think Doc was considering his position at the beginning of the fight. I think Doc was used as a containment man. Yeah, kind of back up. He out was the back street. off mm -hmm. further than the rest, and further down the uh, further down the street than the rest. And uh, Virgil and uh, Wyatt are, are sort of the front men in the in the thing. <coughs> Which makes sense because it's Virgil that's trying to deal with this. Yes, and he says, and here he is with a cane in his hand. 
And he raises the cane up in the air and says, throw up your hands, I've come to arrest you. With my cane. <laughs> now, if you had gone down there with the intention of killing these guys, would you have been standing there with a, with a cane raised above your head saying, I'm going to... <coughs> well, and let's go back to the comment that was made as they're coming down the street, and you hear the conversation between Morgan and Doc, um, and the only quote we have from it is, um, let them have it. But there was probably more to that conversation, like, if they try anything, well, let them you know, have that, it. You, you, that, that, those kind of comments are... are most of the time, fairly useless unless you are, you have the full context right. of, of what's going on. But as you're saying, it doesn't look like they were marching <coughs> down there prepared to kill these people. And there's even the story that Wyatt uh, put his pistol in his back, it was had his hand on his pistol in his, in his pocket, but he relaxed mm -hmm. a moment. And, uh, but when they get there, and he says, and he says, uh, throw up your hand, I've come to uh, arrest you. <coughs> they see that at least two of the cowboys go for weapons. And uh, Virgil says, no, I don't mean that. And... Uh, but from that point on, it's 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 pell mell, you know, then crazy. The firing became firing horrible. begins, and the and the shooting is taking place, and and Tom McLeary is with the uh, <coughs> with uh, by one of the horses, which is not his, by the way, but uh, they they are in the uh, he's in the position closest to the street by this horse. And the uh, suggestion is that he was trying to reach for a rifle in the boot. Now, if it's true, which I think is probable, that his pistol was at, back in that saloon where he had uh, deposited put it, it for the day, then yeah. that he, he was trying to get some kind of weapon to, to, to defend himself. So he he reaches over that, and when he is when he is reaching for the, the rifle. Uh, Doc lifts the shotgun out from under the his coat and and fires, and it uh, hits him in under the, the arm there. Under, under the back side of the arm mm -hmm. and into his the side of his ch chest, and he he goes down pretty much in a heap. Uh, Billy Clanton is shot in the hand first. And, uh, and then he continues to fire. And the real, I Clanton says, uh, begs, begs, essentially begs, don't kill me. I'm, and uh, he takes off and then and runs. And Billy Claiborne also runs, leaving uh, Billy Clanton in a heap next against, uh, up against the wall, trying to cock his pistol fire it and and Frank McLowry is determined uh, to kill somebody and that's where he says to Doc I've got you now you have so be <coughs> and that's when Doc is supposed to have said well you're a daisy if you do right or if you have and yeah reported two different ways in the papers you're a daisy if you do you're a good one if you have it meant the same thing mm -hmm. and uh, so there is some dispute. Most people, I think, give uh, the credit. Now, remember, uh, Morgan has been wounded by this time, and and Virgil goes down. So you, at one point, you the only three men left standing are Frank McLowry, Wyatt Earp, and uh, and Doc Holliday. So, but there is an indication that, that, let me see, I've, it's been so long since I've gone over all this detail, but the, uh, uh, Virgil, I mean, uh, Morgan, I believe, is, uh, fires at Frank. And there, some accounts say that they, that I, that Morgan and Doc 
fired almost simultaneously. And uh, uh, some say both bullets hit, hit him. Almost at the same time. At the same time, or put, and some say they give the credit to Morgan. But anyway, uh, and the horse runs down the street, and they, and they recover it later. And Doc's been hit along the way, <clears> by <throat> the way. Now this is not a, I, please understand that this is not a sophisticated analysis. I, <laughs> I, I'm just kind of going we're, through We're not doing forensics impressions. here. We're, I'm yeah. doing the impressions from what, from what yeah. I've seen. And uh, the... Uh, Doc had also been hit in his, in his hip, in the fleshy part of his hip, and stumbled. Mm -hmm. So he's also wounded, and so Morgan's Morgan's shot is really the is yeah, the kill but, shot. Uh, Mor and, you know, so Morgan Bert, saved Doc. Morgan uh, uh, has a role in the, maybe kill, keeping a Doc from being killed, but mm -hmm. there's a but Doc is a, they're all kind of. A, as as the dust settles, Doc goes back to his room, which is close to next door and you know in the movies they show Doc and Wyatt walking off together yeah and that yeah. didn't happen so Doc went back to his room according to Kate and she said he sat down on the side of his bed and she saw the blood on his shirt he pulled his shirt out and there was blood on his shirt and she said are you hurt and he said no it's nothing I mean he could tell it was a flesh wound probably um, and she said that he started to cry sat on the edge of his bed and so mm -hmm. this is awful awful and remember that, you know, our, our concept of Doc Holliday, the deranged killer, he hadn't been. He wasn't that person. And now he's just been involved in a horrible situation where it's not strangers. These aren't people who've broken into his place that he's killed in self-defense. These are people he knows. These are people he's played with. Um, and they're dead. And he's part of it. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. If being had not stopped the cowboys <clears throat> in the street and got into an argument with them, with, uh, with Frank. And they were indeed leaving town. It was a big mistake for him to stop them because yeah. they would have walked on that half a block further I, I think and, that's, uh, and 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 and, and it uh, wouldn't have happened. No, and it wouldn't have happened. They'd have got the wagon, and they'd have, and they'd have headed out of town and lived to fight again another day. To, maybe live to fight again another and, day. And I think that's one of the things that makes this this fight so fascinating, because there's so many, as you said, you know, the woulda, shoulda, didn't, coulda. How many other scenarios might there have been, and how might well, else been, might this have played out? There have been dozens written. Well, <laughs> yes, there have been. Um, and and you know, people ask me too, what is it that's so fascinating about this fight? Why did it catch the country's fascination? Because it went by wire all over the country. It was reported all the way back in Atlanta, mm -hmm. in the papers in Atlanta. And interestingly, the um, in the papers in Atlanta, Doc Holliday's name was not there. In, and in others of the paper, he was called the sheriff. <laughs> it was Sheriff yeah. Holliday. But in Atlanta, his name was not part of the story at all. And the reason was, that his cousin Maddie's sister was married to the editor of the newspaper. And so they politely took his name out of the paper because in the South, your name only goes in the paper if you're, you know, when you're married and when you die, not when you're involved in a gunfight out West. So this story went everywhere. And, and again, people ask me, why such a, why, is, why this gunfight? Well, look at the theatricality of it. Two, two sets coming up against each other, four and four, three sets of brothers and one odd man out, a southern gentleman, what's he even doing there? And then you add to that, and it's on the dusty streets of a silver mining camp, and silver was a huge story in all the papers at the time because there were investors from all over the country. So you've got all the drama you could put in there on purpose, it's all right there, and then give these most memorable names they had. Doc Holliday, which is such a memorable name that we even have uh, the Michael J. Fox movie, Doc Hollywood. Just sounds so good. People don't even realize when they say the name of the movie. It's based on his name, Doc Holliday. It's just a clever. It's a. It rolls off your tongue well. And Wyatt Earp. What a an unusual 
name that is. And so even the names of the people were almost like the whole thing was scripted to become famous. So here it is, it's famous. And as the movie showed them, they all just walked away and Wyatt goes after the bad guys. But some big thing happened for a month afterwards. Well, it's a, I always think about the, the street fight as being a, and I, I used to call it, uh, <clears throat> and it's not immediately known as a gunfight at the OK Corral. Right, that's just a clever, it, uh, that, that name, it it's do, another it good name. Doesn't sound, it does, that, that sounds, that's a whole lot better name than uh, uh, the gunfight in the vacant lot on, uh, <laughs> or, on, on Fremont near 3rd. Or, or if it had happened at Dunbar <laughs> Stable, it would have been the gunfight outside of Dunbar Stable, which isn't as good. And the name OK Corral, the OK, it was a really popular phrase at the time. And there were OK things all around the country, so it was kind of a new, catchy thing to say. The, uh, it also was an indication that you were a Democrat. Okay, it refers to old kinderhook. Yeah, yes, maybe so. <laughs> so it's just. <laughs> but uh, but so if it had had some other name, would yeah, it have, would yeah, it have but caught? That, but we don't we don't necessarily involve those all those little no. historical. Uh, and, and some people have said a lot of lights. some people have said a lot of this has to do with the Republicans against the Democrats. I just I don't see it that way. If you see further into their lives and see the personal things that were happening, there there these people didn't feel politically motivated when they went out there. They were fighting for their brothers and their families and their livelihood, and that's much more powerful than your political party, and especially Doc, who was neither. He is a member of the Independent Party in Colorado. So as this all ends, there's a huge um, funeral for the deceased, and their bodies are put in fancy caskets and on display, and there's a beautiful fly photograph of them all dressed up for their funeral. And that only, that only aggravates the situation in Tombstone because now there's even more drama added on to the other and people start to pick sides in this debate. Let's take, let's take a little break and then we're going to talk about the trial of the century.